Good morning. Welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church, and uh, happy birthday to all of you as uh, Christians. Today is the birthday of our faith, of the Christian church. Um, we, uh, we remember today the uh, first time the gospel is deliberately sent into all the peoples and all the nations of all the world for all time. And so uh, today is a great and wonderful opportunity to celebrate. Now, um, there are uh, a number of announcements. I'll leave those to you in the bulletin insert. Uh, the main one is that uh, today is our uh, voters' assembly, which doesn't happen all that often, and a couple of uh, really important things on the docket there are our election of leadership for the coming year and uh, voting on uh, proceeding towards uh, doing a remodeling of our uh, offices and education areas um, of grace, so uh, meeting a lot of needs uh, that we've had for some time. So uh, there are uh, some instructions to uh, take care of that if you uh, still need to uh, log in or, or otherwise, um, you, there's uh, contact information there for you. Um, today, our uh, theme, as I mentioned, is that uh, iconic, amazing, triumphant uh, sending of the Holy Spirit. And we see that in our readings today with uh, a fantastic Old Testament lesson on the power of the Word, and then we see uh, the Holy Spirit coming on the Apostles and uh, Peter's sermon at Pentecost uh, as our uh, main readings today. And so we're going to be talking about how we can relate and carry the instructions of Jesus and the example of the Apostles into our daily life, how we uh, can put ourselves in the position of the crowds, of everyone that's around in these, uh, these iconic texts. And uh, above all, we're going to be praising and thanking God for sending His Son to forgive our sins and kick open the gates of heaven for all of us, and uh, remember the people that taught us that that is uh, true and ours. So uh, that is going to be our fantastic theme for today. Um, uh, for, especially for those of you out there, um, we are thrilled that you're joining us in worship this morning. And uh, I'm Landon Martin, one of the pastors here, leading worship with uh, one of our elders, Wayne, and uh, also Pastor Yoon. Uh, if there's anything that uh, we can tell you about, anything you see or hear, if you're curious about the Ministries of Grace, uh, we would be happy to have conversations about that. With all of that said, um, let's get started in this grand celebration of our faith. So I invite you to stand as we uh, sing our hymn of invocation.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Please kneel or be seated for a time of confession. Together we confess, Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sin, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you of all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated.
The Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is found in Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. And I will lay sinew upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are clean cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord, when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put, upon, I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land, Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belong to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mockingly said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you would suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the, through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. 
Yes, here we are. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, When the Helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father, and you will see me no longer, concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Lord Now, in response to the word of the Lord, we unite our hearts and voices with the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible. In one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, who died for his Father, who is all of us, God of wrath, God of life, where God is there is God, who died for the nation, who was one of us with the Father, by whom all things were made, who was the last man, 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 Please be seated for the hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning's message is our Acts 2 account of that first Pentecost, and I'd like to focus on the following words from Peter's first Christian sermon. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So far the text. Not too long ago, I was reading an article that was recalling uh, a time that uh, one of my favorite Christian preachers, maybe in American history, was giving a lecture at a college. And uh, this was probably 30, 40 some odd years ago, something like that. And really early on in the lecture, a student gets up and wants to ask a question. And the presenter, Dr. Craddock, he uh, obliges the request, and the student says, Dr. Craddock, are you a Pentecostal? Now, uh, the presenter, Dr. Craddock, he asks for some clarification. He says, are you asking me if I belong to a Pentecostal tradition congregation? And the student says, no, I'm asking if you're a Pentecostal. Now, a little bit confused, the presenter needs again some clarification, and he asks the student, are you asking me if I consider myself a charismatic Christian? And the student says, no, I'm asking if you're a Pentecostal. Well, now it's getting very confusing. The presenter again asks a clarifying question. He says, are you asking me if I speak in tongues? And the student says, no, I'm asking if you're a Pentecostal, and it's obvious to me that you're not, and he left. Now, in reflection, this presenter has said he has thought long and hard about what he was missing in that exchange, and he still has no idea, decades later what he was missing, what the student was driving at. He tried to ask some people afterwards. To no avail, it's a big mystery. And I think, as Lutherans, that's today. I think that the Holy Spirit is something that we don't talk a lot about. I think the Holy Spirit is something that often confuses us. I think the Holy Spirit uh, doesn't get the same amount of mileage as the Creator or the Savior, and then when Pentecost comes, we all wear red and we get excited and we're a little bit confused. And I'm going to be honest with you that probably of the whole year teaching confirmation, the one day that brings up the most questions and the most tangents is when we're working with that last section of the Apostles' Creed on the Holy Spirit. So, I think we need to figure this all out. So, let's go to the text. Our gospel lesson, similarly with last week, remembers the ascension into heaven when Jesus leaves the apostles, finishes his uh, earthly ministry some 40 days after he's raised from the dead. And we know from Jesus' words that he's perceiving his apostles to be very sorrowful. And the way that he consoles them and urges them to go forward as he's taught them is he promises the Holy Spirit's going to come. In our text, the Holy Spirit's called the Helper, and he promises that the Helper's going to come, and he charges the apostles to wait in Jerusalem until he does, because that will give them power from on high, and that will give them the, the means and the opportunity and the strength to go out and share the gospel as he's taught them to do. So, when our Acts 2 reading opens, they're doing exactly as they were told. They're in the upper room, and they're literally sitting around. They're waiting for the Helper, the Holy Spirit, to come, and he does. Now, this must have been I think, a great relief to the apostles, because when God says wait, we have no idea what that means as far as a timeline goes, and they only had to wait 10 days for Pentecost to come, for the Helper to come. And it looks like this. 
The text tells us that the whole, when the Holy Spirit comes, it sounded like a mighty wind, and it looked like tongues of fire were separated over the heads of the apostles. Now, notice I did not say it was a mighty wind that ripped through, and it was fire over their heads. What we know for sure is it sounded like a wind, and it looked like fire looks like one of the great mysteries. But I think that's something that was meant to catch their attention, is things that look and sound like and act like nothing they knew. And so they, they realized right away, this is something special, this is something from God, and we see not only their perception, but we see the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that's within them as they head out immediately into the streets to preach the gospel. Now, here we see the very first Christian sermons preached. And before we get into the tongues, let's talk about the timing. It was the most absolutely perfect timing that God chose to launch the Christian church into the world. So, the most popular time for people in the whole world to gather in one place was the Passover, and right there is when Jesus is betrayed and suffers and dies, but more than that, rises from the dead. And the next most popular time for people to be in Jerusalem was Pentecost, an existing festival. And so people would often travel to Jerusalem and spend that whole time period from Passover through Pentecost in Jerusalem. And so that's when Jesus is revealing his resurrected self over and over and over to hundreds and hundreds of people. And when those first Christian sermons were preached, everyone still gathered there. So it was the most perfect timing to get the most people, the most crowds, the most uh, conversation to hit the streets and spread the word. Now, I mentioned Pentecost was an existing festival. That's important, too. Moses sets up the terms for Pentecost in Leviticus, and Pentecost was to be a festival that remembers the giving of the law and harvest time. So, they made wine, they celebrated uh, harvesting wheat and grapes, and they had all kinds of rituals surrounding the remembrance of the giving of the law. And it's kind of interesting to think that the same festival occasion and name that was used by God to remember the giving of the law is the one that we now use for the sending of the gospel. It has flipped completely around to talk about what God has done for us as opposed to what we're doing for God. So this is the message that the apostles carry into the streets. And it is an incredible sight. So, we know that everyone around, and the streets were packed, by the way. They didn't have to go far. They didn't have to gather people to listen to them. Nothing like that. They were there. So, when they head out of the upper room, the crowds are right there to hear them. Now, everyone's hearing them preach in their own native language. That's what the text tells us. So, let's first notice that they're not speaking some kind of unintelligible language that people can't understand but think is interesting or that would be interpreted later, nothing like that. Everyone's literally hearing them preach the gospel in the language that they were taught to speak in. And we know from our text that there were at least as many ethnic groups gathered for the festival as there were apostles. So, uh, there is no trouble having all of the apostles kind of take a different language and head out into the streets and the people understand them. Now, God could have chosen Aramaic or Hebrew or Greek to carry the message, and almost everyone would have understood because everyone pretty much understood those languages at the time. But instead, He picks their native languages. And I think not only does this display this grand miracle, but 
it speaks beyond their mind when they hear the gospel in this way. I think it speaks to their heart. Because this isn't just a language they understand. This is the language that they learned growing up. This is the language that mom spoke to them, tucking them into bed. This was the language that dad taught them to build things with. This is the language that grandma and grandpa spoke at the the Passover feast at the table. This is the language that every important milestone of their life is what they heard. And now when they hear the sweet words of the gospel for the first time, God breathes it into their heart in their native language. Now, it's a beautiful account, a beautiful account, but humanity is still humanity, the world is still broken and sinful, and it, it's not perfect. Not everyone hears the message and uh, has it turn into faith. We see in our text the crowd says, or uh, Peter has to address the crowd and uh, get the elephant in the room out of the way. He says, brothers, we are not drunk as you suppose, for it's only the third hour of the day, that is uh, 9 a.m. See, as I said, this is the harvest festival. They were making wine. Wine was really plentiful, and Jewish people typically only drank wine towards the end of the day, the evening meal and beyond, and so if someone was going to pilfer some wine, it would be in the morning. That's when it would happen, and so they assumed it can't be a miracle, all this business, so it must be that they just simply got into the wine. Plus, this is no message we've ever heard before. And they kind of dismiss it away. I think we see still today a lot of the brokenness in our world in those words. So what I mean is, any time that you have ever felt out of place or out of touch because of your Christian faith in a social group, you're right there with the, those first Christians, with those apostles as they're brushed off as having drank too much. Any time that you have ever got up the gumption to share your faith only to have someone, and you know it, think that maybe you're just a little bit crazy, you're there. I think even those moments where maybe you're on the flip side, maybe you think, how can some Christians believe it when the Bible says X? Unfortunately, you're there too. I think in fleeting moments of doubt in what God has done, or if Jesus really cares for you and loves you, in those moments when the brokenness of your sinful self seems to permeate through, I think we understand all these people all too well. Now, in our small catechism, Luther reminds us that we can't, by our own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ or come to Him, but he tells us the Holy Spirit has called us by the gospel. I think that's where we start to see some clarity in the Holy Spirit's role. We see what He really does. See, the Holy Spirit's job is to plant faith in you. The Holy Spirit's job is to create faith for you, to strengthen your faith. And so, your evidence that the Holy Spirit exists is the fact that you're sitting here right now with faith burning in your heart. The Holy Spirit is alive within you, and in that way, He's with you all the time. So, what I mean is, every single time uh, the plain droplets of water cross a new Christian's forehead and is ignited by the Word of the Lord and faith is planted, the Holy Spirit is there. Every single time a Christian hears the Word of the Lord and their faith is 
strengthened and built up. The Holy Spirit is there. Every time a repentant heart comes into worship and hears and believes the words of forgiveness spoken to them, the Holy Spirit is there. Every time we approach the altar and partake of the sacrifice of Jesus in His body and His blood, and that is transferred to us to build up our faith and forgive our sins, the Holy Spirit is there. And every single time that you are wherever you are, and you have an opportunity to share your faith or serve your neighbor, the Holy Spirit is not only there, but the Holy Spirit is giving you the strength and the opportunity and the words and the courage to do God's holy work in all of these moments. And so all over the place, the Holy Spirit is there. When we look to those words of our, God, of our lesson of Peter's sermon, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The Holy Spirit planting faith is how we even have the capacity to call on the name of the Lord. And so, why is it that the Holy Spirit doesn't get the notoriety He deserves? Why does the Holy Spirit confuse us when He's in our daily lives every moment of every day? Well, the Holy Spirit's job is to bring Jesus to you. And in the perfection of His work, your faith remembers the pure, beautiful simplicity that Jesus loves you. And so today, for Pentecost and for every day, we honor the work of the Holy Spirit by forever and for always and triumphantly and excitedly remembering Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which certainly surpasses understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ to life eternal. Amen. Please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and all people according to their needs. Gracious Lord, your Spirit fills the world and gladdens your church with the remembrance of all Christ Jesus has spoken. Glorify his name among us in every word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, by your Spirit, you have established your holy church on the proclamation of Christ our Savior. Sustain the apostolic preaching to the ends of the earth that in every tongue the mighty works of, of God in Christ may be heard. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, give hope to your people in the midst of this world of death and despair. Put your spirit within us to believe, to live, and to serve according to your promises and commands. Lead our homes to confess our confidence in your power to raise the dead now and at the last day. Lord, in your mercy. For the help and salvation of all, especially remembering Joyce, Carl, Heather, Wendy, Bruce, Chaya, Bowie, Haywood, Ellen, George, Linda, Carrie, Jake, Fifi, Nancy, Judy, Catherine, Pastor Fred, Liz, Pastor Cole, Paul, Lisa, Mark, Rob, Lisa, Sam, Anna, Ned, Ina, Vinny, Jack, Ralph, Lauren, John, and the family and friends of Michael, that the Spirit would heal the sick, 
Comfort the hurting and the grieving. Renew the broken across the face of the earth. Look with favor on all creation and fill the hearts of the faithful, kindling in them the fire of his love. Lord, in your mercy. Enlighten our hearts by your Holy Spirit that we may ever be thankful for such grace and comfort ourselves. By it in all tribulation and temptation and at last obtain eternal salvation who with the Father and the Holy Spirit are one Lord, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, in all places, give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestowed on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally, because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity. All who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we lord and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that comes to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on us as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
on to the next table. Jesus, true blood broken for you. Jesus, true blood broken for you. Jesus, true blood shed for you. Jesus, true blood shed for you. Go in peace. Jesus, true blood shed for you. 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 Jesus, true blood shed for you.
This is a true blood shed for you. Please stand. The true body and true blood of Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve your true faith to life everlasting, to life everlasting, departing peace and joy. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into, into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Be the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Now go in peace. Serve the Lord.